Hello, everybody, and welcome to Phone Dog Live. Uh, sorry I'm a couple minutes late. We had some technical difficulties there, but I'm glad everyone could make it. I'm Sydney. I'm an editor at Phone Dog. I'm actually the teen lifestyle editor. I used to do uh, mostly messaging phones and feature phones, but since there aren't really any new messaging phones, I do smartphone reviews now, too. So, um, glad everyone could be here. My hair is straight today. I hope you like it. I wanted to just change things up a bit. Uh, we have some good topics. It's been a good week. Um, I'm especially excited because the Dallas Mavericks are in the NBA Finals. Yay! I'm from Dallas, and so I, you know, I root for the Mavericks. Just so you know, I did not start rooting for the Mavericks just because of their success in the playoffs. I've actually been a Mavs fan for a few years. So I'm not a bandwagon jumper. I just want you guys to know that. But I am very happy that they're in the NBA Finals rematch with the Miami Heat. So it's going to be exciting. Um, but that's not what we're here to talk about. This is Phone Dog. So we're here to talk about cell phones. Sort of a podcast, but not really a podcast because it's, it's like a visual podcast because you get to see people and pictures and things. Uh, although I do hear that my voice is very soothing, so I don't know, maybe it wouldn't be such a bad thing. So uh, I'm glad everyone could be here. I will be on uh, Ustream reading the comments. I'll also be on Facebook if um, there's people there commenting. Um, yes, I see a comment on Ustream that the stream may be laggy. Uh, somebody else let me know uh, if it is laggy, and I'll see what I can do about that. Um, if you're watching the recording of this on YouTube, I'm glad you could be here. Um, I'll also be checking the comments on YouTube, so if you leave a comment there, then I'm going to check it after I upload the video, and I'll try to answer some comments. By the way, while I'm talking about YouTube, um, and also, again, let me know if the stream is laggy, if there's something that I can do about it. Um, I have it kind of on a different quality setting. It's a little bit higher quality, so that may be why. Um, but while I'm talking about YouTube, really quickly, um, I have a YouTube account. It's the same as my Twitter screen name, which, by the way, you can follow me on Twitter. It's my job to know. It's my screen name. Also, but I have a YouTube account, too. Same name. It's my job to know. And I use it sometimes to, um, to comment on, uh, on certain, you know, videos and phone dog videos. Um, and, uh, I had a, it's, I was using my Gmail account, and, um, I also have a, our work, our phone dog work email is also through Gmail, but it was just, like, this weird, different kind of way of doing things, so I had to, I couldn't log into YouTube using my work email, I had to use my other Gmail account, but now my work email got, like, updated or something, and so now I can log into YouTube using my work email, the only thing is, I had to use a different screen name because the It's My Job to Know screen name was already linked to my other Gmail account. This is really confusing. Moral of the story is, I have a new YouTube screen name, and it's Phone Dog Sydney. So if you see that, a comment, and you're like, that's not Sydney. Her screen name is It's My Job to Know. It's actually me. I just had to create a different thing. So, okay, if the stream is laggy, if it's really bad, I can restart it and do, like, a lower quality. The only thing is, when I upload it to YouTube, it's really, really bad quality, and people complain about it. So, if it's bearable, or if you can, if the audio is fine, if it's just the video that's choppy, then maybe we can work with that. Um, but just, you know, somebody else let me know if if it's just completely unbearable, and if we need to do something to fix it. I did have a problem connecting initially when I started streaming. Um, there was sort of a problem, so. Okay, um, I can see myself, and so that's why everything is backward and always messes me up. So we have a lot of good topics to talk about today, and me not being one of them, we're not going to talk about my stupid YouTube screen name the whole time. Uh, we have a lot of good topics to talk about, so let's get on to that while I'm still rambling. Um, I actually managed, with our phone dog live topics, we usually have like three, you know, maybe two or three main ones. Today we have a lot, because there's a lot of stuff that happens, and I actually managed to fit Google, Microsoft, and Apple into the topics, so equality. And I always try to do that, because I don't want to talk about all Apple, or all Android, or, you know, all Windows Phone 7, because 
you know, we're not just an Android site. I mean, we talk about all news, and so I try to fit everything in there, and sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. Um, anyway, so, yeah, people have been commenting on how it's laggy. Again, you know, just continue to let me know if it gets better or if it's just unbearable, if I need to start over, um, and then we'll, we'll go from there. So first, the, the first thing I wanted to talk about is uh, Google Wallet. It's Google's new mobile payment system that they just debuted um, this week, I think, yeah, this week. And uh, it's, you know, not entirely new. I mean, we've seen, um, you know, we've seen these kinds of ideas before. For example, MasterCard's uh, pay, what was it called? Um, pay Pass system, which is this little plastic um, panel that, you know, um, retailers can set on their counter and you just kind of like wave your card in front of it or if you get a special little pay pass um, keychain thing, you just wave that in front of it. And so it's sort of that idea. And then, you know, NFC, the, you know, that kind of technology has is, is been known for a while. It just hasn't had widespread implementation. And so uh, Google has decided to take a crack at it. And uh, they're actually partnering with MasterCard. So that pay pass system is, you know, part of what they're going to use. Um, partnered with MasterCard, Sprint, First Data, City. And uh, they're going to use the NFC chip inside of, for now, the Google Nexus S. This is the only phone with an NFC chip. But, you know, theoretically in the future, more phones will have an NFC chip. You can use your N NFC phone to just swipe it in front of the, you know, point of sale POS. I don't want to say POS because every time I hear POS, I think of something else. But point of sale and then you just swipe in front of it and it charges. So really easy, um, basically eliminating the need for a wallet, which is great because, I mean, I have a wallet, it's a pretty big wallet, but I don't have any cash in it. Um, I just have a bunch of cards, my driver's license, you know, some coins that I never really ever use. And so um, definitely makes things a lot easier. People have been talking about security. Google claims that it's really, really secure. They said they put a lot of measures in place to make sure that your information is secure. Um, you know, my concern is, is this actually going to work? And one of the things that, you know, you think about um, a rollout, you know, I mean, for the time being, right now, whenever they're launching or, you know, talking about launch, this is only available on one phone, the Nexus S, Nexus S 4G, one carrier, Sprint, and one card, City MasterCard. Now, the system, the app that your phone is going to use, you can add other cards to it by kind of creating what's called a G card, and then you can add funds to that card from whatever account you're going to use. So you actually have to transfer the funds to that card, the G card, but it's in essentially using the accounts, even if you don't have a City MasterCard. But you know, for the time being, it's only one credit card, one phone, one carrier. You know, the Nexus S, the Nexus S 4G, they're not even massively popular phones. I mean, say by Google's, you know, Google's numbers are that about 4% of Android devices use 2.3, which is what the Nexus S uses, which essentially the Nexus S is, you know, 4% of Android devices. That's not that much. Sprint is the third largest wireless carrier in the U.S. You know, not a whole lot of support there. And I'm not saying that it's not going to catch on. Um, let me see. I'm looking again on Ustream. The stream gets keeps getting choppy every few minutes. Is it, let me know, Stewie, if it's the audio and the video or if it's just the audio. Because if it's, or just the video. Because if it's just the video then maybe we can just keep going so I don't have to restart everything um, just to keep everything smooth. Um, so just let me know. Um, anyway, so what was I talking about? Yes, Google Wallet. So, I don't know, aggress I think an aggressive rollout would really be necessary because this is kind of a new thing. I mean, people are creatures of habit. And I worked at a place, um, at a retail place, where we offered MasterCard's uh, pay pass system as a way for people to pay. And even though it was easier, it was free, it's simple, it's convenient, for some reason people just didn't didn't get it. They just didn't want to use it. I mean, 
it just didn't catch on. Even though it was easier, people would still rather pull out their wallet, hand me their card, let me swipe it, give it back to them, they put it back in their wallet, they put it back in their pocket. I just got a message. And, you know, people are just creatures of habit. Not only that, but, you know, Google's going to be facing a lot of competition. Visa is planning to apparently be really aggressive in their rollout of a similar system. Um, also, the other carriers, Verizon, AT&T, T-Mobile, they have their own system that hasn't been established yet, but they're working on a system for the same kind of mobile payment. So Google's going to be facing a lot of competition. And so the problem that, again, that I'm kind of thinking of is that it seems like they could have spent a little more time getting support. I mean, yeah, they have Sprint, which is, you know, a, a national carrier. MasterCard, you know, a lot of people have MasterCard. City, but it seemed like they could have taken a little more time to get a lot more support from major companies that would provide crucial infrastructure for the system to really be successful. And it reminds me of the recent launch of Music Beta. Google didn't want to wait to solidify their contract negotiations with the record label companies. So instead, they just released a halfway finished product, hoping that people would still want to use it. It's the same thing with this. I mean, Google could have made more agreements. They could have worked with the other carriers, said, I know you already have a system, but ours is better, and been a little more patient. But they didn't want to do that. And so now they release a halfway done product that has no support. And um, I don't know. I'm kind of skeptical of it. Um, and I'm not just bashing you know, Google. It's not just, oh, I think this is a stupid idea and it's never going gonna, never gonna to catch on. It's just, you know, we've had ideas like this before. MasterCard's PayPass system has actually been around for, um, what, five years? Maybe longer, six, seven years? Is still around, from at least from what I know. And, I mean, no one ever uses that. And so, I don't know, I'm kind of a little skeptical about it. I don't mean to be a Debbie Downer or anything, but um, that's just what I'm thinking about Google Mu or. Google Music, Google Wallet, you guys feel free to uh, let me know. The stream is choppy. For me, it's a mixture. It's both Skype. And I see payment was launched this week in the UK too, but with Orange and Visa, I think. It would be cool if they finished their Skype for Android. Yeah, well, that's kind of a whole different story. Um, but yeah, so I'm, I'm just a little, little skeptical about Google Wallet. Um, let's, let me talk a little bit more about, you know, what exactly Google plans to do with this, because there are some interesting incentives. Um, you know, for one thing, it's, it's simple. Um, you, you get the app, you enter a PIN number that's going to be kind of like when you do use a debit card, you have to enter a PIN number. You, same thing, you use a PIN number, you'll add a credit card by just adding the information, filling in the blanks. Your bank will verify your, you know, identity, make sure you are who you say you are. And then that's pretty much it. You can ver you have to verify your account through email. You have to verify that card. Um, but then that's pretty much it. You just swipe it. Now, Google has added some incentives, which I think may help for it to catch on. Um, merchants can, for example, here's a cool one. Merchants can automatically detect if you've been shopping at their store a lot and can set you up with a rewards account and card. So kind of like you know Starbucks rewards or just any rewards program, um, they can set you up with that just you know through your phone. And then every time you shop there, every time you swipe your phone, it'll give you points or a discount or whatever the rewards pro program is. Also, um, I believe they can also um, do coupons. Yeah, you can search Google for you know a certain kind of store, and then that store can set up coupons that you can download to your phone and then whenever you swipe it it automatically uses that coupon so again a nice incentive for retailers to try to get more customers get people to spend more money um, but also for consumers in general to make it easier and give you a little more incentive to actually use a program um, again I'm skeptical just because it's on one phone one carrier one card um, I just don't know if it's really aggressive enough for Google to for it to be successful for Google. Um, especially, like I said, the competition. We've also heard that Apple is planning on doing something similar to this. And, you know, Apple is um, usually the company that sets the bar when it comes to new innovative features. So, I don't know. We'll have to see. 
Um, that's Google Wallet. Um, I don't know how it's going to go. And you know, I was thinking about this. It's it's really futuristic. I mean, whenever, if you're the kind of person, I, well, we all here, you know, we love technology. And so whenever we see features like this NFC, where you can just use your phone to swipe, that's really futuristic. And it's awesome because it's one of those things that you would see in a movie about the future it's just and it's like it's finally happening you're like oh my god this is so cool and so you want it to work and you want it to just be everywhere but the thing is that there's a lot of companies involved there's competition and i've said this before about other features or you know about other technologies in movies you know all these futuristic technologies that we see in movies you know why they work so well it's because movies, they don't have brands. They don't have competing companies. The film writers just make this stuff and it all works together. But in the real world, it's not like that. You can't play an online game with whoever you want because you have a PlayStation and your best friend has an Xbox and they just don't work together. I mean, yeah, the technology is really great and futuristic, but those two companies are never going to work together. So I think it's going to be the same thing with... With this, Google Wallet, you know, some credit card companies are going to go with this service, some credit card companies are going to go with another service, one carrier wants to do it this way, another carrier wants to do it another way. Are all phones going to be compatible? I mean, Google is, is Android, but I mean, what about Windows Phone? What about the iPhone? They're probably going to have their own system, and if you just have that many systems, I just don't know if it's going to be able to work. But um, that was really depressing. That seemed really... Uh, pessimistic, but I don't know. I just thought about it, and um, that's what I came up with. That's Google Wallet. Uh, now, in other big news, moving on from depressing news to, I don't know, maybe depends on how you look at this next thing. Um, Microsoft announced or unveiled their Windows Phone Mango update, um, and it's actually pretty cool. They're adding a lot of features that... Uh, after what happened with the PlayStation Network, I wouldn't mess with Google Wallet, at least not at first. That's true. And again, you know, I mentioned earlier that Google claims that this system is really secure. We, I mean, have no way of verifying that, really. Um, you know, I guess if someone's account gets hacked and their money is stolen, then we'll know, oh, it wasn't really that secure. Um, PlayStation Network, totally annoying. I have a PS3. I used to have an Xbox. We sold it, I have a PS3. Really annoying with the PlayStation Network, but anyway, that's a different story. So, anyway, moving on to uh, the Windows Phone Mango update. Mango is the code name. Microsoft says that they haven't actually come up with an official name, so Mango is what they're calling it. Everybody is calling it Windows Phone 7.5 because I think somebody looked at, I don't know, the source code or the information and it said 7.5, so that's what we're all calling it. Um, it's really exciting, and you know, I forgot, I actually have some pictures that I want to show you guys of Google Wallet before I forget. I know I'm switching back and forth, I keep going. I want to get onto the Microsoft thing, but I want to show you guys at least some pictures of um, Google Wallet. So, let's see, one of the cool things is that you can add a gift card to, um, to the Google Wallet app. Um, this is a picture of, you know, swiping through the different cards that you have in your system. Uh, like I said, you can have a G card where it's just any random card. You can transfer your funds to this G card. So if you don't have a City MasterCard, um, then you can use the G card. And then here's the, the whole thing from Google City. Advantage, 50% off. So you can have the coupons, you have the incentives sales, it's a way for retailers to um, to get people to shop at their store. So I like having pictures every week because I think it makes it more interesting than just, you know, looking at me. Anyway, so those are my pictures for Google Wallet. Moving on now, finally, I'm moving on to Microsoft, uh, to Windows Phone Mango Update. Here are some of the new features that Microsoft is adding. You can see App Connect, IE9, Local Scout Groups, Multitasking, which is a really big one, Quick Cards, Threads. So I'm going to talk about a couple of these, and I have oh, a lot more topics to talk about. Hopefully we'll have enough time. Um, it's 421, but anyway. 
So um, multitasking, I think, is probably you know the one that most people are you know right off the bat most excited about. Once you hear about the, about the other things, then you might be excited about that too. But multitasking is one of the things that people were surprised when it wasn't there originally because you know we figured this was going to be like Microsoft's answer to iOS, which you know it kind of is. But they didn't have multitasking. Everyone's like, that's the one thing you should have to compete with iOS. But they finally have multitasking, so you can see it's basically not really anything new. The, the way that they do it, you have cards, you can slide through, you can go back and forth, and uh, you know it looks nice. Uh, it seems like the background color mirrors the same color that you've set up for your live tiles, so it can be this color or orange or whatever you've set it up to be. It looks great, very simple. Um, from what, from the way that Microsoft described it. I'm not entirely sure if this is multi, true multitasking or if it's just app switching. Um, that's what I'm thinking. It seemed like whenever you switch to a different app... Sorry. sorry about that. That was my phone. I was not expecting that. So it seems like whenever you switch to a different app, the other one just stops running. So I don't know if... Maybe I just misunderstood, but it seems like it's not entirely true multi multitasking. But at least you have the option. Uh, you also have Twitter integration, the People Hub, improvements to IE9, so that was the Internet Explorer notes that it had there. A unified email inbox with threaded conversation views. This one is actually, um, I think, very useful. I love the interface that you know Microsoft has used. Just overall, you know, this is the email interface, but overall, I love the font and uh, I love the design. But so anyway. Now you can have a unified email inbox and you can have threaded, uh, threaded messaging. So here's, you can have that email and then when you select it, it shows you the thread of all the emails that you've sent, that you've received. And so it's pretty cool. I think it looks great. Um, again, you know, not a huge deal, but it's kind of one of those necessary features and I'm glad that they added it. Uh, and then some new, some new software ideas that you, I'll explain them to you. Quick Cards, App Connect, Local Scout, and Bing Vision. Bing Vision, I'll get on to in a minute. So Quick Cards, App Connect, and Local Scout kind of work together, at least in the demo they showed them really working together. And they really worked nicely. So starting off, Quick Cards allows Bing to pull up detailed information about your search query rather than just a list of links. So they gave the example, when you type in a movie title, Along with, you know, the search results and the links, it will also show you a list of show times for theaters in your area. Whenever you select those show times, the quick card opens for that movie, and it'll show ratings, it'll show the summary, um, it'll show, you know, different times. Again, it'll show you the theaters where it's showing at. So you can see here a quick card for a particular movie, the rating, the genre, you can see the cast, the show times, and that's the quick card for that movie. Next comes App Connect. App Connect will help you to, you'll search your phone for apps that are related to, you know, the search that you've done, just done or what you're currently working on. So here, since we search for a movie, uh, in the quick card, the App Connect app that comes up is IMDb because obviously we're talking about a movie. Now, why, now this is where Local Scout comes in. Why, while you're looking at the movie info, Local Scout, Scout will show you information about the area for the particular area for the particular theater that you've picked. So, if we select Local Scout. Now we've selected a theater, and it says, okay, you can also go to these restaurants or, you know, these different places or shopping, um, which is really nice. It all works together. So, basically, Microsoft's idea with this, did you like the pictures? It's like a slideshow, and I explained everything. It was awesome. Probably not as awesome as I thought it was in my head, but it seems like a great idea. Um, so, the point that Microsoft, you know, the, the idea that Microsoft is trying to create here is that you can do all of this without having to open up different apps and do several different searches. Now you are using different features, you know, the quick cards, the local scout, you're going to IMDB, all of that is, you know, different features and, and, and apps, you could say, 
but they all work together and they're, it's, it's seamless. You don't have to switch between this app, this app and another app and do this search for a movie and then this search for what's in the area and then this search for, you know, ratings for the movie. You know, it's all just, it works together. So those, I, you know, I think um, works together really well. I'm pretty excited about what they introduced in Windows, Windows Phone Mango. I'm not entirely sure if it sells me on actually getting a Windows Phone because... The thing is, a lot of the features that they talked about, or a lot of the, um, a lot of the programs that they talked about, don't really. I don't really use those services. So they talk about threaded, threaded messaging, where you can receive a message from Facebook, respond with a text message, or you know through Windows Live Messenger, and it remains threaded. You don't have to go from, uh, you know, from one, from Facebook to text messaging. So here you can just have the threaded conversation without having to switch back and forth between Facebook and Windows Live Messenger. It's all there. My thing is, I never use Windows Live Messenger. I don't know anyone that does. I don't use Facebook really at all. Um, you know, they talk about Office. I don't really use Office. Um, I don't have an Xbox. So, of course, this is me personally, but um, I think the feature is really exciting. I just don't know if it's enough for me to actually jump over and get a Windows Phone 7 device. Now, Microsoft also announced that they will have, oh, Mango will be launching this fall. They'll also have some new hardware, some new Windows Phone 7, or Windows Phone 7.5 devices. And some of those devices will be 4G. So yay, Windows Phone on 4G devices. It's gonna be pretty cool. Um, so excited about that. And that's that's Windows Phone Mango. There's a ton, there's a ton of other features. Um, Microsoft actually said that there's um, 500, 500 feet new features in Mango. So I touched on like what five. So uh, we have an article on PhoneDog.com where it kind of summarizes the main features and kind of talks about them a little more. So you can check that out. But those are the ones that really impressed me, and uh, I think I think they're going to be really good for for Microsoft. It seems like they really put a lot of thought into it and didn't just you know throw stuff out there to be different. I think I think sometimes Microsoft tries too hard to be different from, you know, Apple and, and everyone else, and it ends up just really sucking really badly. But this, it seems like they put a lot of thought into it to make it actually work better, not to just add features, but to make things work better. So I'm I think it's going to be great. Again, you know, probably not enough to win me over. I am I have an Android device, so, but um, but still pretty cool. Now, I, like I said, I wanted to keep everything even, and so we've talked about Google, we've talked about Microsoft, and now we're going to talk about Apple, so no one can say that I'm showing favoritism, because it's all equality. We have some new info on the iPad 3. Now this is, uh, you know, for one thing, not huge information, so don't feel excited. Um, and also, there's been some conflicting ideas of if this could actually happen or not. But here's the story. Uh, the Korea Herald has reported that Apple COO, Chief Operating Officer, Office, Tim Cook, recently visited South Korea and met with Samsung to discuss using an AMOLED display on the next iPad. Now... Keep in mind, he's a COO, but since Steve Jobs is is out for um, medical leave of absence, he, uh, Tim Cook is also handling the CEO job. So he's met with Samsung. Apparently, this is a story. Met with Samsung to discuss using the AMOLED display on the next iPad. And their source even told them that Apple even offered Samsung an advance for the displays, an advance being a payment of some sort. And... Um, Excuse me, this source also said that this AMOLED packing iPad 3 would be out later this year. So, if you've been waiting for an iPad with an awesome Retina display, not quite Retina, but AMOLED display, um, then supposedly that's what we're going to see next. Now, the downside is that there's a lot of people that are saying that this is not going to happen. Uh, for one thing, we do know that Samsung has talked about using an AMOLED display on their tablets, on their own tablets, the Galaxy Tab. 
but they haven't even shown off these tablets, meaning that they're not going to be released anytime this year. So the question is, why would they allow Apple to get first dibs at their technology and release a tablet with an AMOLED display before their own tablets don't get an AMOLED display? That doesn't really make sense. Also, OLEDdisplay.net, which is actually a website, these guys actually cover news on OLED displays, which I thought was kind of strange, but there it is. Um, they did some digging. They said that basically the same thing, Samsung wants to focus on small to medium-sized AMOLED displays, like on phones, and they're not going to deliver a larger AMOLED display until 2012. They also talked to Barry Young, who is the director of the OLED Association. He said basically there is no way that Apple is going to have an iPad out this year with an AMOLED display. Now, that only cuts off half the story. It is possible that the iPad 3 could have an AMOLED display. These people are saying it's not going to happen this year. Maybe at the earliest it would be 2012, um, but even then they seemed, you know, this guy, um, Barry Young, the director, he was a little bit skeptical about that too. So, but anyway, that's what we hear. The iPad 3 could have an AMOLED display maybe next year, or maybe this year, but it seems like it's we're leaning more towards next year. So um, if you're thinking, you know, should I get an iPad now or should I wait? Um, is it worth it to wait for an AMOLED display? I think so because, you know, I've always, you know, one of the great reasons to buy the Galaxy S was because of the beautiful display. And I know people think, you know, that's stupid. It's just a display. I mean, how big of a deal can it be? But whenever we actually see it, it's amazing. And then now they have the Super AMOLED Plus display. So I, I mean, I think it'd be worth it to wait. But again, that's, that's your decision. You'll have to decide on that. But those are just some little tidbits about the... Um, I got the iPad 3, and uh, we still don't have any solid release dates for the iPad 3, so I don't know. It could be this fall, it could be next year, um, I don't know. But that's that's what we heard. Now, uh, I also have, along with all of those big news items, because that was a lot. I mean, Google Wallet, Microsoft Windows Phone Mango, huge update. iPad 3, no iPad 3 News is always huge, but along with those big things, there are also some little things that I wanted to talk about. Uh, some extras, I call them. So you can see on um, on a topic of discussion, it has been updated to extras. And uh, I know I haven't read or responded to any of the comments, um, mostly because I've just been talking, talk, yeah, talking, talking, and focusing on what I'm trying to say. And also, I notice that you guys aren't on topic at all. So <laughs> anyway, but here's the extras. Uh, there's been an update to Google Music Beta, and uh, this, is a, this is a really huge update, and uh, it's a feature that, I don't know why Google, and I noticed this the first time I used it, but I'm just going to finish a sentence here. Um, you can now delete a song that was cached. So, you know, the service of Google Music Beta is you stream your music from your iTunes library to your phone. Um, and so obviously you have to have an internet connection. So you could, you had the option to cache music to your phone. So when you don't have an internet connection, you can still listen to music. Now, the problem was that once you did that, you couldn't actually delete the song from your phone. It was just kind of there. And I noticed this. I ca and I thought it was just me. Maybe I was doing something wrong where I didn't know. You know, maybe it was just that I didn't know how to do yet. Um, but apparently, and I was like, what? I can't delete this song? That's dumb. But I'm just like, okay, whatever. Maybe it's just me. But apparently, yeah, you couldn't. So now you can. You could delete the song. I think that was a feature that Google should have had right from the beginning, but they didn't. But now they do. Next, the T-Mobile G2X. We know this is a big story. It's been removed from shelves, um, removed pretty much everywhere. You can't buy it uh, unless that's changed. And so the rumor was that there were... Um, quality control issues, and uh, that's why T-Mobile removed them. We still don't entirely know what happened. T-Mobile is saying that it was inventory constraints, that they just sold out of the phone. But regardless, we're hearing a rumor, Timo News, our partner site um, that publishes T-Mobile News, it's, I know it's a creative name. Um, they got a leaked screenshot 
that shows that T-Mobile could be raising the price of the G2X due to these inventory constraint, constraints. So basically, they don't have enough phones and people are buying too many, so they're going to try to stop people from buying the phone. I don't know. So they're raising the price. It was $199, and the rumor that it is that it's going to go up to $249 after a $50 mail-in rebate. So it's actually going to be $299. So basically, a hundred dollars higher. Um, that's that's kind of kind of disappointing, but I just want to let you guys know that's the rumor. Next extra tidbit: um, Apple iCloud. Uh, we're hearing it, it's probably not going to be free. This is Apple's cloud music streaming service, basically just like Google Music, so you can also buy music. Um, so we're hearing that this could be incorporated into Mobile Me, which currently costs a hundred dollars a year. So possibly that same price, a hundred dollars, but it would include Mobile Me along with the iCloud service. So that's that's a source from um, Stone and Fixmer, who are two authors. I guess they got some I don't know, got some inside information there. So that's what we're hearing about Apple iCloud. Um, we have, there is so much to talk about. There's just so much. I'm still in the extras. And if you have any random question, by the way, um, at the end we have a 15 minute open Q&A. So if you have any like random question about anything, um, you can wait till the last 15 minutes, which is in about 10 minutes. So 10 minutes, open Q&A. So the next kind of exciting thing is that Asus is apparently planning on releasing a new tablet, two new tablets. And uh, this was the teaser that they released. Let me show you. Uh, Asus 2. Okay, so here's one of the teasers. Break the rules, a tablet that jumps out at you. The rumor is that this is going to be the ePad Mimo, 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 which is a seven inch device, has a dual core Snapdragon processor, is running Honeycomb. And uh, this little note about a tablet that jumps out at you, we're thinking that maybe now this tablet is also going to have a 3D display. But from what we do know, if it is this tablet, then it has a dual core processor and a, uh, a 7-inch display. Um, now, the, net, the second tablet that we're hearing they could release is from this teaser. It says, break the rules. And uh, we're hearing this could be a tablet and a phone. So it's like a tablet phone. So you can see in this picture there's a big tablet on top but then underneath that is a smaller device, obviously a phone. We're hearing this could be called the pad phone and maybe some sort of dock, maybe where the phone slides into the back panel of the tablet and somehow works like a dock, kind of like the Atrix that Motorola has. Um, but that's so we're looking forward to that. That's really all we know about it. I just wanted to give you an update because that's kind of exciting. It's a different form factor that we don't really see very often. The tablet phone. I don't think we've ever seen that really, a tablet and a phone. So uh, next, let me see if I have time to talk about all of this. Maybe I'll skip ahead to my to my next note. Uh, the Droidex update. Droidex users, if you're one of the million people who have asked me when you're going to get the 2.3 update, Here's some news. You can stop asking me. Uh, we heard that the 2.3 update was going to be coming to the Droid X today, and then we heard it was going to be coming June 1st. It appears that today is when test members will be getting it. So there's a certain group of people that are qualified test users. <coughs> Excuse me. It appears that they are going to be getting the 2.3 update. Um, as like a test run to make sure everything runs smoothly and then later on then you know widespread Droid X 2.3 goodness for everyone. So um, if you are in that group and you probably know it um, then that update should be coming to you later on tonight. I think by tomorrow morning your phone should be letting you know that you have it. Um, so that's the update on the Droid X update and then hopefully everybody will have it by June 1st, which is only a few days away. And lastly, okay, last thing I want to talk about, and then I'll open up to open QA. There's so much to talk about, and 
Whew, I just almost didn't have enough time. I'm gonna have to get a drink of water too, because my throat. Okay. Another thing that people ask me about a lot is the AT&T slash T-Mobile merger. Um, and most people are against it, which is not news. And uh, it seems like the, uh, the government is not really in favor of it either. So yesterday was a second hearing by members of Congress. Um, AT&T's CEO, Randall Stevenson, he was there. He stuck to his message that this was all about the consumers. The members of Congress didn't buy it. They said that it was all about money. Um, Parul P. Desar of Consumers Union said the merger would result in a highly concentrated market, which would likely lead to higher prices and fewer choices. Representative John Conyers, which made me think of Terminator, because um, his name was John Conyer. It was John Conyer, not John Conyers with an S. This is John Conyers. Am I right about that? Terminator fans, correct me if I'm wrong. But it made me think of Terminator. Anyway, which made me think of Arnold Schwarzenegger and that. Anyway, okay, so John Conyers, of, which is the representative from Michigan, he's a Democrat. He said, I'm concerned that this merger is bad for consumers, bad for business, and bad for innovation. Mergers would kind of sound like a rap. Bad for consumers, bad for business, bad for anyway. Mergers always eliminate more jobs than they create. There is every likelihood that the proposed acquisition of T-Mobile by AT&T could lead to both higher prices and decreased consumer choices. This is basically, these are not all of the quotes from the members of Congress, but they all said basically the same thing. Now, these are not the people that decide whether or not this merger goes through. Um, so this could just be people talking and then it ends up going through anyway. But it seems like the government is not in favor of the merger. So if you want to know about that, that's the update that we have so far. And um, looks like it's not good news for AT&T, but um, who knows. And I'm looking at my desktop. I had all these pictures that I wanted to show you guys. I wanted to make this like a really visual phone dog live to make it interesting. And I don't think I got to use half of the pictures that I wanted to use, but that's okay. I had too many pictures. That's what it was. It was too many pictures, and I couldn't keep track of all of them. I wanted to talk and keep everything smooth. Anyway, you don't have to listen to my failures. Okay, so that, that's the news. That's the wrap-up. It is 4.43 or 5.43, depending on which time zone you're in, which means that it is open Q&A time. So it was Connors. It was Connors, not Conyers. It was John Connors. Okay. I haven't seen Terminator in a long time, so maybe that's why I didn't get it right. Anyway, so open Q&A time. I will, again, start reading the comments. And since it doesn't matter what topic you're talking about, as long as I get a question. Um, also on Facebook, and here, if you're on Facebook, I haven't been checking Facebook at all. So if you have posted a comment, I haven't seen it. But I'm going to be checking Facebook now that we have the open Q&A. So... Feel free to leave a question or a comment, and I'll be checking them. What do you think will happen to AT&T if the deal dies? Well, we already know that uh, part of the agreement was that if it does die, that AT&T is going to have to pay some hefty fines. I believe um, it will be like $8 billion, billion with a B, that is pay T-Mobile $8 billion, and they'll also have to give up, give up some of their spectrum. So we do know that's going to happen. Other than that, uh, I don't really know. Connor, no S. Okay, Droid Bionic release, if at all now. You know, I was thinking about, the, about that the other day, and I was like, God, is that phone out yet? And it's not. The Droid Bionic, uh, still, we're hearing this summer, summertime this summer, so. Um, what phone does Sydney have, and is she happy with it? Is that, can I answer that, or is that 2.3 on Optimus 1, will it come? I get asked that a lot, and honestly, I don't know. Um, it's a mid-range device, so there's a possibility that it won't get the update. I think I've had people tell me 
that they heard that it was going to get the update and they just want to know when. I never heard that it was going to get an update, so I don't know where that story came from. I can't verify that it's true or not. So 2.3 on the Optimus one, I have no idea. Uh, read BMX's latest post. He said he's been hearing the third week in August for the Bionic. Yeah, I hope, I hope AT&T has to pay. What new phone coming out has the biggest hype? Um, probably the Galaxy S2 and the HTC Sensation. Um, what do you think of the Nexus S 4G being the only phone with Google Wallet at launch, even though the Nexus S is fully capable? I feel like Sprint is Google's new baby. You know, well, Sprint maybe just is the only carrier that wanted to partner with them, and I don't know what the agreements were like with the other carriers. Maybe the other carriers just didn't want to partner with Google. Uh, we talked about that. You might have missed it in the beginning of the broadcast. That was our first topic. We talked about Google Wallet. And yeah, I do think that's naive for Google to, you know, launch. A, I mean, this is a this is a risky, you know, um, product, risky service, and uh, for them to launch it when only one phone has NFC capabilities, not even like only available on one phone, but there's only one phone that even has the ability to do it. I just think that was naive of them. Evo 3D. Uh, are you happy with your ISP? I am ready to drop off ASAP. No fiber on my street. Boo copper. So I guess my POS, my Touch 4G, ain't getting 2.3 for a while. My Touch 4G, let me check. My Touch 4G, quarter two, so yeah, no updates other than that. Let me check Facebook. A second post. Okay, no comments there. Um, will there be any more dogfights between the Galaxy Indulge and any other phone? The Galaxy Indulge. Um, no, probably not, because the only other, the only other worthy phone of a dogfight on um, on Metro PCS is the uh, Optimus M, and I already did that dogfight, so I don't really. I mean, I could compare it to other smartphones on Metro, but I just don't think it would be, it wouldn't be a fair dogfight. I mean, so, no, probably not. Sorry. Um, did you guys review the LG Revolution? I think Aaron just did that unboxing. You can check out phonedog.com, and uh, he just did the unboxing, so he should have the review up by next week, middle of next week. My Sprint Blackberry style broke after three months, so I have to send it in and use a bad Motorola Nextel flip phone for 12 days. I hate dealing with Sprint RAM because it's a pain, capital P-A-I-N, to find a number for BlackBerry customer service. Will there ever be a dogfight between the Galaxy Indulge and Epic 4G? Oh, that's actually... I could... Um, I could... I'm thinking probably not... Probably not, because they're both Galaxy devices. So, I mean, it's like, same, I mean, basically the same exact features. The Galaxy Indulge is basically a, a mid-range version of the Epic. So, it, I mean, the Epic is, it would win easily. You don't even have to do a dogfight. I can just tell you right off the Epic is better. So, no, probably not. What do you think of the HTC Flyer? Um, you know, it's all right. I don't really like, you know, the whole capacitive stylus thing, overrated. I don't know why HTC didn't just use Honeycomb. I can understand like the first Galaxy Tab didn't have Honeycomb because Honeycomb hadn't even been released yet, so I was like, all right, fine. But I mean, they had plenty of time to use Honeycomb. I don't know why they didn't. What's your opinion on tablets, and do you have a fave? Um, my, I like Samsung's tablets because, uh, I don't know, I just like Samsung's devices. I like their UI. I like their physical design. Um, and uh, tablets, you know, they're great. They're not a necessity, but they're useful if you can afford one or, you know, it's not a big deal. You don't have to have one, but I think they're great accessories. Um, yeah, the LG Revolution unboxing is on phonedoc.com. Let's see what time is it. 4.50. We have 10 minutes left. Indulge. Do a Galaxy Indulge with the Huawei tap-out. Yeah, you're right, CV Bala. 
Bala? Bala? Um, indulge would win. Yes. Also, they have Google Voice integration. I can't. P.S. I like today's phone dog live. You did a great job. Love the pics. Thank you. What bothers me is the Nexus line is supposed to be the pure Google experience, yet my Nexus S is crippled compared to Sprint's 4G version. They can video chat on 3G, 4G. I can't. Okay. It's so weird. There's usually a lot of comments on Facebook. I mean, not a lot, but usually there's, you know, a fair amount of comments. And it's funny because I always forget to check. I always forget to check Facebook. And then today, the one day that I remember to check every five minutes, there's no comments on Facebook. So there was a comment from 30, 30 minutes ago. No one's posting here. <laughs> and a comment from 14 minutes ago, but that's it. That's okay. Um, do you like your carrier? Do you think I should say with, with Sprint for their $79.99 everything data plan or go with T-Mobile's truly unlimited plan? Um, well, the difference is that uh, T-Mobile throttles your data after, it's not actually, un well it is unlimited because you get unlimited data, but once you read a, reach a certain amount, um, then your your speeds are throttled, so they're slowed down. So, I mean, same price, but data speeds are going to be faster, more consistently. Unless, you know, you don't use a lot of data, then T-Mobile should be fine. Changes are you won't reach that cap, um, but if you do. And then, you know, minutes and messaging, um, I guess, again, that I don't know how many minutes you use, so I don't know. Um, but just going on data alone, T-Mobile throttle, throttles the speeds, Sprint doesn't. For that reason alone, I would say stay with Sprint, unless T-Mobile just has a phone that you just desperately want. This is my first live viewing, and you read like three of my messages. I feel special. You're welcome, Nick. Yo. Um, glad I can make you feel special. Personally, I have 18 viewers, so it's not like there's a lot of comments, which is really weird. Um, <clears throat> Usually there's like 50 viewers, which even 50 isn't that many, but usually there's more, so. But I'm glad I could answer your question. $80 a month for a phone. Nice. Nice. Uh, hey, it's Nick Yo. I'm on T-Mobile. I got throttled like two weeks ago, two weeks into my bill cycle. Oh, wow. You must use like a ton of data. It's Friday, maybe that's why. Um, oh yeah, it's Memorial Day weekend. That's right. I might go to Galveston um, this weekend with my fam, with my husband and my sister-in-law and my mother-in-law and my cousin-in-law. I guess even my cousin-in-law because he's my husband's cousin. We might go down there. Um, I'm thinking at Galveston, uh, which is south, you know, um, Gulf of Mexico basically. Um, I'm thinking a beach on Memorial Day weekend would be really, really packed, but I'm the only one in the group that thinks that, so we're going to go, I guess, maybe. Um, I would get more minutes with T-Mobile, and I only use like 2.5 gigs per month. I try to limit myself, but it's hard because I tether a lot. Okay, well, I think the cap on T-Mobile is 5, is 5 gigs, so that should be enough. My cousins have a beach house in Galveston, Texas on the Gulf Coast, so I guess you're going to, going for Dallas then, Dirk is a white mamba. Yeah, I talked about that in the beginning of the broadcast. I'm very happy because um, I've been watching the maps for a few years. My husband has been watching them for like 10 years, and uh, so I'm excited to see them in the finals. Dirk deserves it. it. Just, he just deserves it. Metro PCS or Cricket Mobile? Um, you know... I don't have cricket in my area, so I, I don't know anything about, you know, coverage or what call quality is like because it's not in my area and I don't know anyone that has it, so I can't I can't compare them. I will say Metro PCS is in my area, so I know more about them. Their prices, I mean, $40 for unlimited everything is great. Um, they don't have a, th a true 3G network. It is 3G, but it's the slower, older version of 3G. They do have a 4G network, which is super, super fast. 
So if you want to get a 4G phone, I would go with Metro PCS. So, but I don't know anything about it. I don't know much about Cricket, so I can't say. It's five. Okay, no way is two gigs per month. No, no, it says online two gigs per month. Okay, go heat, white, hot, Miami. Two gigs of data for $80. I live in Miami. Don't read that out loud. Okay. <laughs> I like the heat, but I wouldn't be mad if the maps win. Go Miami heat. I get unlimited for what? For what equivalent to about $16. Okay. If you like T-Mobile and want unlimited, go with Simple Mobile. Yeah, Simple Mobile. I looked into that, and um, it works. The only thing is, if I, if I remember correctly, you have to pay full price for a phone, which I never like doing. Metro PCS, you also, like, their 4G phone is like $400, um, but all their other phones are really, I mean, like, $150 for their second best smartphone, which is a really good price. And then you could get a phone for like $10 if you want to, so. Uh, unlimited data, it's 4.57, we have three minutes. SM Smart Mobile has is that Smart Mobile SM has 4G HSPA plus? I'm switching to Sprint after my contract is up, December 2012. You do have to pay full price or get it unlocked. I got T-Mobile. Nick, you'll be dead anyways. It's 29 with the Galaxy Indulged. Oh, it's, the Galaxy Indulged is only 300. Sorry, not 400. It's 300. I love not having a contract. Oh, there's a question. There's a comment on Facebook. Oh, yay! Um. It's Memorial Day weekend equals lack of comments. That's that's from Facebook. So thank you, YBT, for that comment. Glad you have comment on Facebook. Metro PCS's Galaxy S is three ninety nine. Is it three ninety nine or two ninety nine? You know what? I'm just gonna check myself. Uh, I thought it was like three forty nine. So both of you could be somewhat right. Does the Windows Phone 7 Mango update add support for HTML5? Yes. LOL. Sprint's coverage sucks in Miami. Oh. Okay. Um, phones. The Galaxy Indulge is $399 normally. Oh, oh, it's on sale for $299. Wow. That's good. That's a good price. And you know, most of the 4G phones on like Verizon are $299 anyway. And this way you don't have a contract. You know what? I would I would go with the Indulge. I, I did a review on the Indulge. I don't have it anymore. I had to send it back. I was really disappointed about that. But I did a review on the Indulge and it was off the chisane. It was just it was great. I mean, not like the best phone ever, but for being on a prepaid carrier and you know for what it was, you know, 3.5 inch display, sort of a mid-range but top notch in between there. Anyway. It was a great phone, and 4G was, like, super fast. 4G WiMAX coverage everywhere except in the suburb I live in. It is also spotty. It's 4.59, which means my computer is about to tell me that it's 5 o'clock. So we are pretty much done here. Um, but thank you, everybody, for watching, and thank you for asking the questions. If you're watching this on YouTube, if you're watching the recording, thank you for watching that. I will be checking the comments on YouTube. So feel free to leave a comment, and I'll respond to any, any relevant questions. Uh, we'll be, we do this every week, every Friday at 4 p or 5 p.m. Eastern Time on our Facebook page and our Ustream channel. I tweet about it, so you can get reminders. If you want to follow it's me on... There's my computer. It's 5 o'clock. If you want to follow me on Twitter, my screen name is It's My Job to Know. And uh, I guess that's it. I will see you guys later. Again, thanks for coming. And um, I'm trying to, I feel like I'm forgetting something, but I think that every week, and I'm not. Okay, I'm going to say bye. Thanks for watching. Bye, guys. I'll see you guys later.